Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Prehistory in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons and my channel members from our sister channel over at History in the Dark. You are the reason why this content remains single-celled, which isn't accurate at all, but I guess today it might be a little bit. And we are going to resume our little series on the origin of life on our planet. Life from the Darkness. And we're going to be moving on from the overwhelmingly hellish situation that was the early Earth and the Hadean Eon, and move on to some calmer situations. The Archean Eon, which I completely mispronounced in the last video as Archean, but uh, it's actually said Archean. My bad. Now, the Archean is actually divided up into some eras Eo Archean, Paleo Archean, Meso Archean, and Neo Archean. And for most of this series, I wanted to talk about the individual eras, or where applicable, individual periods. But to be honest, there isn't much of a difference between these eras. And because we're talking about so long ago in the Earth's history, like four billion years ago, there just isn't as much information. So I'm going to incorporate them all into this one video, encompassing the entire Archean Eon, since I just don't think the videos would be very long if I stuck to the individual eras. Now, like I said before, the Archean is a lot calmer than the Hadean Eon. Starting in the beginning, the crust of the Earth was now finally, completely, totally solid, in a similar manner to, well, the way it is today. We can walk on it without falling into horrible molten rock, and the temperature on Earth was actually kind of reasonable. It fluctuated a lot over the eon because of course it did, but overall the temperature's average seems to be very similar to the way the temperature is in our atmosphere today. This actually results in a bit of a debated issue for why this is the case among the scientists that are studying this eon, because even though the temperature was the same, we still would not have been able to survive in this early Earth, because the atmosphere was not the same. In the beginning of the Archean, there still wasn't any free oxygen in the atmosphere. It still had a tremendous amount of carbon dioxide. The CO2 should have been causing a reasonable greenhouse effect on the planet, but the thought is that the sun was actually dimmer during this eon, and that as a result there was less heat radiation on the Earth, and so the greenhouse effect that the CO2 was causing wasn't actually as bad as if we were to have this much CO2 in the atmosphere today. Another interesting fact about this eon is that it's thought that the first continents would have appeared, and that there may have been at least two supercontinents during this time, like Pangaea, the most famous supercontinent, but not Pangaea. The plate tectonics don't always reassemble the continents in the same way, in fact they pretty much never have ever done that, so these supercontinents would have looked a lot different from Pangaea. But the result is that the Earth started looking relatively familiar. Besides the differently composed atmosphere, the oceans were in place, and it was becoming the little blue ball of joy that we're quite familiar with today. The eon wasn't perfect though. There was also the Pangola glaciation, which resulted in some water on the surface of Earth starting to freeze. And this is because the Earth was starting to cool down, because there was less CO2 in the atmosphere over time. And why was this? But that's because the Archean is the first eon in Earth's history that we have solid proof of early life. Now the process of life forming, known as abiogenesis, which is the process where non-living things somehow become alive, is still not well understood. Even now, we just don't know how or why life just appeared on the Earth. One day, suddenly, things were alive. How much awareness you could attribute to a single-celled organism is highly debatable, but the point is they were living things, and were the genesis of literally all life on the planet even now. The life of that time was simple, single-celled, and the earliest fossils of this consist of stromatolites, which are microbial mats that are formed in shallow water by cyanobacteria, commonly called blue-green algae. These early life forms were actually prokaryotes, which are single-celled, yes, but they lack a nucleus. They also don't have mitochondria, and most of the other membrane-bound organelles that characterize a eukaryotic cell that you probably learned about in your high school science class. This type of single-celled life often includes things like extremophiles and methanogens. It's believed that the microbes first appeared around undersea vents in the deep oceans, but eventually, over time in the Archean, they would actually begin migrating to the upper parts of the ocean, and some bacteria managed to find refuge on land. They also learned, and this will be very relevant for later, how to do photosynthesis, which meant that they started pumping free oxygen into the atmosphere and taking out the CO2. This process was extremely slow at first, 
But eventually, things would change, as the early life was anaerobic. That is, they did not use oxygen at all to grow. But the Archean Eon remains very interesting, as it does retain the true genesis of all life on the planet, as far as we understand it. But all those fancy new life forms pumping oxygen in the atmosphere would actually change the atmosphere permanently, and it would cause a crisis, but that wouldn't happen until the next Eon, the Proterozoic. But that's for next time. Till then, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.